Who is uh, the Holy Ghost? The Holy Spirit is God. He has the attributes of God. He has the characters of God. And point one to prove that is that the Holy Ghost uh, is uh, omnipresent. And the word omnipresent there is the word everywhere. So the Holy Ghost is what? Is everywhere. Psalm 139 and we read verses 7. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Uh -huh. Where can I go from your spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? Meaning the spirit of God is everywhere. Uh -huh. David says, where can I go from your spirit? Meaning the spirit of God is right where you are. As much as the Holy Ghost is present here, the Holy Ghost is right there. I don't care. You can fly as high as you want. The Holy Spirit will be with you there. You can go under the earth. The Holy Ghost is right there with you. As I'm talking to you, though you might not have money in your bank account, guess what? The Holy Ghost is right there where you are. You might not have food in your house, but the Holy Ghost is right there where you are. You might be driving, listening to me right now. The Holy Ghost is omnipresent and we know god to be omnipresent so if the holy ghost is everywhere and god is everywhere then the holy ghost has the character of god because the only person or entity that can be everywhere is god and right here from the book of psalm we see that even the holy ghost is everywhere the second point that I want to present to you is that he is omniscient. Now, the word omniscient there is actually the word he is all-knowing. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 11. The things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. When you read it in the book of Romans, I believe it's chapter 8, it speaks of how the Spirit of God searches what is in the mind of God. Just as God is everywhere, the Holy Spirit is everywhere. Just as God is all-knowing, the Holy Spirit is all-knowing. Because he's the only one who searches what is in the mind of God. Meaning no one can access the mind of God except by the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is the only person or the only spirit that can grab what is in the mind of God and put it in the hearts of men. So when you see us move in the prophetic, it is not every time we prophesy in the office, Kalida Bahande. It is not every time we prophesy by the cloud of the prophetic. But now when you read Acts 2 verse 17, it says, In the last days God shall pour out his spirit upon all flesh, whether there is an unction or not. The Holy Spirit himself is the unction. And it says, and they shall prophesy. So when you see us prophesying, it is never by might. Never by power, but it is by his spirit. So the Holy Ghost himself is all-knowing. That's why I can stand in front of you right now and begin to teach. And you go, but how does he know all these things? It's because the Holy Ghost that searches the mind of God is in me and I understand who he is. So if I want to know something, Kalida Baron Takabaha, I know how to fathom. The realm of mysteries. I know how to build myself up. I know how to prepare my spirit for a revelation that is not yet present to the realm of men. So the Holy Ghost, brothers and sisters, he is all-knowing. You can get into a conference room and begin to know people's thoughts. You can perceive their thoughts about you. You can know what they are thinking about you without anybody telling you. And not because you are a prophet. Not because you are a seer. But because you have the Holy Ghost in you. But as long as you are not conscious of these things that I'm teaching you. You will never experience the full power of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says we have received the spirit without measure. We have received the spirit of God in fuller measure. Stop limiting the Holy Ghost. Take him out of the box that you have put him in. Stop conceptualizing the Holy Ghost. As I'm talking to you right now, the Holy Ghost knows what you are dealing with. The Holy Ghost knows your challenges. And it is not that he can't do something about them. The more you know, the more you function. The less you know, the less you function. The Holy Ghost does not force himself into us. He does not force you to know things that you are not prepared to know. Number three, 
he is all powerful, which is omnipotent. When Gabriel was talking to Mary, the mother of Jesus, Gabriel is telling her that you are going to conceive. She said, I know you are an angel of the Lord and I'm not trying to fight you, but how can these things be? I'm prophesying to somebody right here. How can these things be? Gabriel did not say, eh, maybe I'm going to lay my hand on you. Or maybe God is going to release a word. Immediately, Gabriel says the Holy Ghost. I don't know who I'm talking to. Somebody there, you are wondering, how am I going to get married yet I'm single? I have an answer for you. The Holy Ghost. I, uh... Apostle, how am I going to build my house? Yet I don't have money in my bank account. The Holy Ghost. Apostle, how am I going to buy my car? Yet I don't have enough money in my bank account. I said the Holy Ghost. Just as Gabriel answered Mary, the power of the Holy Ghost shall overshadow you and the impossible shall become possible. Apostle, I just got in this company three months ago. And yes, I'm trusting God for promotion. But wait a minute. How can these things be? The Holy Ghost. Apostle, nobody hears me in my family. I'm the last born. I'm the only one born again. They don't really pay attention to me. How am I going to convince them? I said the Holy Ghost. I'm going for a new interview, Apostle. I don't think I'm prepared. I don't, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think I'm ready for it. I say unto you, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. It does not matter what interview. It does not matter what challenges are standing in front of you. Once you know the Holy Spirit for who he is. As a matter of fact, once you know the Holy Spirit for who he is. Truly, when Mary was to conceive, the Holy Ghost is the one that Gabriel introduces to Mary. You know what that does that mean? It means the Holy Ghost has creative power. She did not know how is it going to be possible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the Holy Ghost has got creative power just as God has creative power. I will give you the fourth one. He is eternal, meaning he is forever. Hebrews 9, 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit Aya. offered himself without spot. Who through what? Eternal spirit. Who through what? The eternal, the eternal spirit. spirit. So the Holy Ghost is what? Is eternal. The Holy Ghost is forever. Other spirits are temporary. But the Holy Ghost is eternal. He was there from the beginning with the Father. He is here. And he shall forever be there. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is eternal. Stop treating the Holy Ghost like uh, a person who got lost in the Trinity. So you, Bemara, when I get you, I speak in tongues. The Holy Ghost is so special. You know what uh, John 3.16 says? It says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Yes, Meaning Jesus is a gift. When Peter was preaching in Acts 2, and you read from verses 19 going down. He says, repent and receive ye the gift of the Holy Ghost. Meaning the Holy Ghost is a gift. That's why the Bible calls him Allos Paraklatos. Allos, as I said, right? It actually means another. The word Paraklatos means helper. But its original roots, it actually means standby power. If I have generator in my house, I use generator as backup power. As long as the real power, the actual power is on, I don't need my generator. Because my generator is backup. Some of you, you have solar as backup, right? As soon as power cuts, the backup, if you put it on automatic, it just goes brr, bum, bum, bum. All of a sudden, you have power. What is that? That is standby power. So you can't be in darkness. You can't be in the dark. Because you have standby power. The reason why he's called standby power or another helper is because Jesus was their ultimate power. Jesus was their helper. Jesus was their comforter. That's why when Peter's mother was sick, Jesus went to pray for her. Why? Jesus was what? Their comforter. But he says, as I go, another helper. 
Meaning there is a standby power. That when I ascend, he shall descend. That's why Jesus said to the disciples in Acts 1 and 8, ye shall receive power. When he comes, brothers and sisters, he comes with power. Why are you powerless? Why are you powerless? How come all these powers are, are, are prevailing against you? It's because it's either you don't know the Holy Spirit for who he is. The fifth point, he is God. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Acts chapter 5, verse 3 to 5. But Peter said, Ananias. Why did Satan fill your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? And to keep back part of the price of the land. Uh -huh. Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, uh -huh. but unto God. Thou hast not lied unto men, but thou hast lied unto who? Unto God. But he said, why did Satan enter your heart? To lie to the Holy Ghost. He says, you did not lie unto men. You lied unto God. I, uh... So the Holy Ghost is God. You want to know him, Paul? He said, apostle is not enough. And the power that resurrected him. I said, wait a minute. So Jesus got resurrected. So there is a power that resurrected him. When I checked, I found out it's the Holy Ghost. The power Paul is talking about that brought Christ back to life was the Holy Ghost. So when Christ died and he was buried, it was as if the Holy Ghost threw a rope and threw it to Jesus and brought him back to life. I'll give you the six point. The Holy Ghost is love. Romans 5.5. 5. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love. God has poured out his love. Into our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Into our hearts by what? The Holy Ghost. Meaning the presence of the Holy Ghost in a believer is the presence of God's love. Meaning a believer cannot be able to love without the Holy Ghost. That's why you don't see in the nine fruit of the spirit, the word power. You thought when the Holy Ghost comes, he only gives you power. Power is not fruit of the spirit. Your mistake is when you hear the Holy Ghost, you are thinking power. What saved us from the cross was not power but love. What defeated Satan on the cross was not power but love. And why was Jesus able to love to that extent? The Holy Ghost.